Good morning. It is still May 220. The plague is still outside. A certain sense of um, flexible boredom has set in, filled with interesting reading. Uh, if you don't love Zadig after you've loved Candide, you're not a reader. No, you probably read other things. But I have been reading Voltaire, and Zadig is one of those uh, wonderful novellas of... Uh, my schooling, which I remembered so well enjoying, and I like it just as much now as I did then. It is um, the story of a wise man, of a good man, of a just man, who does all the right things, and in the process of doing the right things, he is destroyed by uh, everyone else who appreciates his judiciousness and his sense of justice and his wisdom. And for one reason or another, um, it ends badly. He has to run, uh, go to another place where the same story repeats itself, which I guess is an illustration of um, uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Now, I see the road to hell, uh, I see the good intentions of government, uh, I mean, of the CDC, not of uh, the rest of it. I see the good intentions of people trying to be healthy, and uh, I see also the uh, thinking going on. Uh, some of it is uh, questioning of why we are here, uh, which is a futile question because we are here. And so we are here, and what we do is uh, read. I would advise not watching the news, but reading. Voltaire is wonderful in so many ways because he stands clearly at the beginning of the Enlightenment with the conviction and the passion that uh, at the time uh, he had to do undercover, underground. He was in exile in uh, Geneva where his pamphlets uh, were smuggled into France. The French would have liked very much to hang him. Instead, um, the revolution of Illuminism uh, was fully possessed men's hearts and women's sense of themselves at the, t at the time when uh, the aristocracy uh, was powerful and the rest of uh, people were dust which is very much the kind of world that we seem to be heading to a new Middle Ages. In any case, Voltaire nailed it beautifully. He speaks of tolerance, he speaks of humanity. He has a wonderfully cutting wit about religions and superstitions, and he's a firm believer in this measuring and looking at the universe in precise ways. And they are funny too. So to keep a sense of humor and to look for the truth is, uh, is an endeavor that uh, we seem to have forgotten. But the fathers of this country, Benjamin Franklin in particular, were great readers of uh, Voltaire. So uh, there is that, and then there is poetry. And poetry is, it's, uh, is a language. It's a language not everybody speaks. It's a language that many People who call themselves poets uh, speak very badly because they think it's English or uh, Romanian or whatever. They think it is a language that um, um, uh, instructs. They think that it is a language that uh, is full of advice and good um, um, psychology. It is not. It is a language of poetry. Uh, so in the language of poetry, which is quite rare, and you know, all the poetry that surrounds us and books and pamphlets and things is not, I mean, it is a way of talking, but it is not poetry. But poetry does live into the great event of uh, yesterday was the mail, because in the mail was John Godfrey's new book called The Torch for Orphans. The title already touched me enormously, not because I'm an orphan, but because I'm, um, the world is sort of an orphan. And The Torch for Orphans, with its uh, uh, hints of passing the torch and the um, uh, giving light to the orphans or hope, is, uh, is, uh, is, 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 in, is poetry. Uh, the poems themselves, of course, do other things, and I'll read one of them. 
It's called Scare Scarecrow Dollar. Already the title is profound. Scarecrow Dollar. I mean, uh, you know, all of Wall Street should read Scarecrow Dollar. A lot of peers shed by stages like collegials. Then there is makeup for unnaturals. Italian bad boy duds on dames. Knights industrial uniform supply. My clothes talk through chuckles. On scarecrow dollar day, I do the slop. They call me old folks. His honors hiss in ears. A tune, a standing wave, a word. I love to see and hear how great I make note of you. Score fills with high brass. A long transient eye measure with spotlight size. Dusk, either end of day, sounds more real. Goes on forever, it seems. Though I know, I know. But what's so great about this? This is the language of poetry in which these tremendous ellipses fill with meaning and the way to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to setting your soul on a certain plane. When, when he says a lot of peers shed by stages like collegials, he is saying something that you must understand this. Uh, uh, a, a, a group of peers of those people his age that uh, uh, are by stages leaving us, that are um, collegial in the sense of dying in stages. I'm filling in, of course. Then there is makeup for unnaturals, Italian bad boy dads and dames, knights industrial uniform supply. My clothes talk through chuckles. And here we have an entire history and critique of the fashion industry or of the, in the fashion of the working people, which John Godfrey knows well, who John Godfrey knows well, people who, um, you know, put uh, makeup on them because they are unnatural. Makeup is unnatural in many ways. Then he knows Italian bad boys uh, that uh, put their duds uh, on, or women who put duds of uh, Italian bad boy on themselves. You know, this is another scene that he knows well from the Lower East Side, which has always pioneered the gender um, uh, advance or the gender switch and then he John Godfrey also works as an EMS worker and he knew the emergency of that and he says night night's industrial uniform supply now that is so accurate so urgent the night's industrial supply the night has this is filled with these uniforms the supply of industry that is now insufficient in places sufficient at last on this day, but night's industrial uniform supply. These are the urgent EMS clothes that are torn, that are taken from the night, put on um, by clothes, talk to chuckles. He has this clothes on, he's collegials, his um, other EMS workers are gathered and ready for work and they chuckle because it is 3 a.m. and there is nothing to do after you put on these tough clothes to go somewhere and carry someone to an ambulance and through these chuckles the knight's industrial uniform supply talks and on scarecrow dollar day which is probably friday because that's when the workers get paid and these uh, dollars are scarecrow dollars because uh, they're symbolic mainly to keep away the birds of hunger and the birds of whatever on scarecrow dollar day i do the slop so on scarecrow dollar day is a good day because you can buy food and you can dance and yes it is scarecrow dollar day and uh but you know i do the slop but they call me old folks they call me old folks man i've been up all night you know doing wearing the industrial clothes of the of the night and doing these things. You call me old folks. Uh, his honors hiss in ears. 
uh, well, he probably had to go before a judge for some infraction, had a you know, traffic ticket or something. A tune, a standing wave, a word I love to see and hear how great. His honor has been left behind, he hears music. A tune, he hears, sees a standing wave. He hears a word he loves to see, just like he's, and hear. He loves to see it and hear it. He loves to read it and he loves to hear it. How great, I make a note of you, how great it is to see you, that John Guthrie sees you through this word, through these notes and he, the dollar scarecrow day where he has slop, he's, uh, he's set. Score fills with high brass, more happiness, a long transient eye. And this is the moment when the eye the himself, you know, he's, he sees his passage and his passage has been lengthened by the happiness of scarecrow dollars. Uh, I make a note of you, score fills with high brass, a long transient eye, measure with spotlight size. So the long passing eye measures with attention, with affection, um, uh, you in size, in the spotlight, because, you know, he's one of the old folks and the you that is being watched or spotlighted is maybe, you know, thinking that he is an old folk. Uh, dusk. Either end of day, sounds more real, goes on forever, it seems, though, I know, I know. And then comes dusk, and it is the end of the day, of a day that wasn't too bad because he got paid, it was the end of it, he shed the uniform. Dusk, either end of day, sounds more real. Either it is true that the end of day where the old folks live is more real, and it goes on forever, it seems, Though, I know, I know, he knows that, but he also knows that he can look and he can see and make a long transient eye of his attention. And this is a short poem, and I explained it for about uh, 12 minutes. Thank you.